and pro-Palestinian protests and riots continue throughout the United States as anti-Semitism surges. Joining us now to discuss the worrisome trends is TV personality and Jewish activist Emily Austin. Thank you for joining us. For having me. So Emily, we recently saw the march in Washington, D.C. in support of Israel and against anti-Semitism. This maybe does provide you know, a bit of light. Do you feel that the pro-Israel and pro-peace voices are finally being heard? I think we've been doing our part. I think every single person who showed up that day did their part in it. We are making sure that our voices are being heard. Unfortunately, on the media end, they've been silenced. But you can't deny an in-person event. 300,000 people all over the country came. And we were seen, we were heard, and it, most importantly, it was peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about this really astronomic rise in anti-Semitic events that we're seeing in the United States on college campuses and also in the streets. I mean, has this all just been there under the surface waiting to explode as we've seen in recent weeks? I mean, when you were in college, did you experience or witness this level of anti-Semitism? Unfortunately, way before October 7th, I've been advocating to combat anti-Semitism and it's been there. It hasn't been so prominent. Um, a lot of people have been feeling it, but this um, conflict in Israel has been allowing people to use Israel as an excuse to justify their anti-Semitism. And on college campuses, it's not that I've seen so much anti-Semitism in my own experience. It's that it's it's always anti-Zionism justifying the reason why they don't like the Jewish people. And if you support Israel, it's okay that we're anti-Semitic. That was always the narrative that I've seen on college campuses. And of course, I had a professor one time tell me, you know, you only work on TV because you're a Jew, right? And to me, never experiencing anti-Semitism before, I was taken back with these are the comments that we hear here and there that show us like people actually believe this. You know, and it's not just anti-Semitism. I think it's also anti-West. I mean, you've said in many interviews recently that one of the main problems is social media and specifically uh, TikTok and shaping the way that the young generation views Israel. And really today I saw something truly disturbing. It's a new TikTok trend where young people are reading Osama bin Laden's letter to America and excusing, even supporting him on 9-11, you know, the worst terror attack in U.S. history. I mean, it's, it's really unfathomable. So what can you tell us about this? Is this really TikTok that's to blame? I'll break it down. I'll try to keep it concise. So TikTok, obviously, everyone knows by now, I hope, is owned by China, which it's in China's best interest to watch the demise of the United States of America. Now, how do we do that organically? China is not going to come out directly and say, hey, America, we're going to brainwash and poison your youth to become so anti-American that you are vulnerable and weak, and that is how we will infiltrate. But that is what TikTok is doing for them. They don't have to say it by infiltrating our algorithms and putting out this anti-West agenda that Gen Z is so quick to believe that. That's how they are infiltrating our youth and poisoning their minds. And it's incredible because it's anti-Semitism and anti-West, and they seem to go hand in hand. A lot of people who are advocating literally pro-terrorism, pro-Hamas, fail to remember one single point. They won't ever be done with Israel, but in their minds, once they are done with Israel, America's next. So all of these college students who are chanting from the river to the sea or calling Hamas uh, freedom fighters or fighting that resistance, they don't understand they are next. You are next. They don't like America either. It's a terrifying uh, future. So what do you think is the solution? I mean, how can we combat this rise in anti-Semitism and this you know, anti-Israel, anti-US, anti-West sentiment among uh, the young generation today? America needs to set a strong precedent that if you are, if you believe in anti-Western values, there's no place for the United States of America. If you are on the streets of New York and you're ripping down the United States flag and you are acting like a barbarian calling for the Jewish genocide, you have no place being a United States citizen. You know, I, I, I hate the narrative when people say, go back to your country. But when you move to the U.S., you came here for a reason. You came here for protection. And if the U.S. is so bad that you want to destroy it, you should not have a place here. And for college students that are calling for Jewish genocide and making Jewish students feel as if they need to hide in attics, you have no place in college. You should be expelled right away, and that should be the precedent that's set so people don't feel so comfortable being blatantly anti-Semitic. 
So I have to ask, you know, are you optimistic about the future? I mean, seeing all of these young uh, college students come out against Israel, many who don't even really know where Israel is even on a map, you know, c couldn't locate Israel on a map. I mean, this doesn't bode well for your generation who will be the future world leaders. So are you optimistic? Can you remain optimistic when you see this? I want to point out a lot of the loudest people are the most uneducated and they are a, a loud minority. Gen Z is a generation where we're brainwashed by TikTok, but I think if more people like myself that are, I'm 22, if more 22 year olds came out, a lot of people are very smart, but they're too afraid to speak out and they don't want to use their voice. They don't want to jeopardize their careers. But I think people understand what's at stake here if we don't. And a lot of people need to come out and speak out and more people have been speaking out. So if we all play our part and we do speak out and we don't let people just blatantly come out and commit hate crimes against Jewish people and we, Gen Z, start to educate one another and engage in dialogue, then I do have faith. But if we're not going to do that, then without the dialogue and without these conversations, nothing will change. All right, Emily Austin, thank you so much for your insight and for speaking out. Thank you. Thanks for having me.